Good morning. Let's all stand together and join Brother Larry to lead us in the pledge. Then have your song books open to page 130 for our opening song. Everyone standing for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Page 130, there's power in the blood. Page 130. Be free from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Good evil or evil, the victory wins. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Welcome each one of you to our service this morning. Have you come to praise and worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. It's good to see each one of you in God's house this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I come to you once again today thanking you for your love and care for us, thanking you that we can be here this morning to praise and thank you for what you've done in our lives and what you're going to continue to do in the body of Christ. And Lord, we ask this morning that you would speak to and through uh, me this morning and each one that has a part in our service, that we would all be drawn closer to you. And, Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Savior and the free pardon of sin, that today would be the day that they would reach out, come to an altar of repentance, and we know if they come that you will save them this morning 
and bring them into the body of Christ. In your precious and holy name, I pray and thank you. Amen. You may be seated. First of all, let me apologize to those that are listening this morning. We had some technical difficulties last week, and the sound wasn't uh, going out uh, for our service. We, we think we had got it fixed, but we're still having a few problems this morning. So you pray for us that God would intervene and everything would go out and, and be fine. You know, sometimes Satan rears up his head and he wants to get involved and tear down what we're doing for a work of God. So continue to pray, pray for us. This is brand new and we're trying to do our best uh, and we want to give God the glory for what's accomplished and thank each one that has taken a part in this and done so much good for us so we could have a service that would go out. As you know, we had a funeral yesterday, a member of our church's daughter. We ask that you would continue to pray for that one, uh, that family. Another family had a death in the family. Also, they're in need of our prayers today, so we need to continue to pray for each of these families that have uh, lost a loved one. Uh, continue to pray for each one that's on our prayer list this morning. We are continuing to see answering of prayer. We see the Lord working in our lives, and I thank him for that. He is a God of love and compassion, and he is, wants to be involved in our uh, everyday life. So continue to pray for our church, for each individual, each family that's in our church, that as the word of God would go forth, we would all uh, be strengthened uh, in what he has uh, in our lives for us. Uh, <clears throat> continue to pray for our country. We know our country is in turmoil, and we need to pray for the leaders of our land, for those that are uh, making decisions, especially where uh, this virus is concerned, that they would make right decisions, that we would follow their guidelines, as you see us doing in our congregation, to protect each other. Uh, we're doing these things, so we ask that you continue uh, to do those things in your daily life, that we can see this thing defeated, and we can give God the glory. God is the one that's in charge. He is the one that can make the difference. But it's up to you and I as children of God today to pray for our country, the leaders of our land, the doctors and the scientists that are going forward to make uh, vaccines that we can see this thing wiped out completely. But most of all, it takes the healing hand of God for these things to happen. So continue to pray for these that we'll see it happen uh, uh, very quickly. Also, I ask that you <clears throat> continue to pray for our church, that we would come together in one mind and in one accord, that we would see God's blessings, we would see people accept the Lord, see families come and join in, in with us as we go forward, doing the call of God's work on our lives. So I ask each one of you now, if you'd like to raise your hand, you have an unspoken request. God sees those hands, he knows that heart, and I, th I can tell you this morning that he will answer those prayers. He will guide you through each thing that uh, you have happening in your life, but you must yield yourself to him. You must let him be control in your life so that your prayers will be answered. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know that we, I think we have two or three families that are still traveling. Remember them in your prayers that God would watch over them bring them back safely to us. Uh, I got a call this morning from a family that was in need of prayer, some physical problems that they're having. You say, well, you're not telling us who they are. God knows who they are. All you have to do is lift them up in prayer this morning, and we know that God can reach down and touch them this morning. So continue to pray for the membership of our church that each one that's had a physical problem uh, we'll be touched and back in our midst. We have some with us this morning that hadn't been here in two or three weeks, but God has touched them and strengthened them, and they're back with us today. So we're giving God all the glory for that. I believe that's all the announcements that I have, so we'll go to the Lord in prayer once again before we go further. Father, I come to you once again today thanking you for your presence that we feel in our midst. Thank you for each one that's here that has come to praise and lift your precious and holy name up to each one that's listening, that your word would be a strength and a help to each one of them 
Holy Spirit, you're welcome in our midst this morning. We ask you to be in complete control of each thing that's said and done, that we would receive a message directly from you this morning, that we can go forward in our lives knowing that you're in charge and we'll give you all the honor and the glory for what's accomplished here this morning. In your precious and holy name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Take your psalm books once again. Let's turn to page 34. Higher ground, page 34. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still pray. to sing this morning my sister Nancy lives in Alabama and she called me and told me to go on YouTube and listen to the Turner family singing a song called I'll leave it all behind she said there's a little granny that you're just going to be blessed with and sure enough I did so if you love this song and I hope I can do it just as just like granny but it has powerful words because someday we're going to leave this world behind all the troubles and cares we're going to leave it behind on earth I've walked through storms and trials a heavy load and the worried mind but cares of
and heartaches here I'll always find but I'll never fear I'll never worry one morning I will leave it all behind I'll leave it all I hope my sister in Alabama enjoyed that song this morning, and I hope each one of you has been blessed by it also. As uh, they were singing that song, I was thinking about what happened yesterday at the uh, funeral service. Sometimes at funerals, being a pastor, uh, things don't go exactly the way you planned them, and you have to kind of go with the flow and what the people want. And the lady asked me about a special song said that wasn't included in what we wanted to do, but I would like for your sister and your son-in-law to sing this song if they could. So I said, well, we'll see what we can do. You know, I just expect when you ask something done, they'll just do it. So when I went to them and told them, they said, well, we need an organ. So I went back and found an organ. Then I found the funeral director, and we got it pulled out from the wall. It wasn't even plugged in. But they went over and hit the keys, and they started writing down all the words to the music. And uh, as I went by and watched them, and they were humming, and they're writing, and they're doing this and that. And me, in a jokingly manner, I said to them, well, I haven't seen that you have written a part in there for me. And my son-in-law, who loves me dearly and has a lot of respect for me, looked up to me and he said, Dad, you know, I have written a part in here for you. And I said, what is it? He said, the part we've scribbled out. <laughs> so you have to be very careful uh, what position you put your family in because sometimes they will just let you know that you're just not number one and you're not completely the one that everybody bends and bows to. But it was a great song and we were blessed by that song and I thank them for going a little extra and doing uh, what the family wanted them to do. And that's what funerals are for. for. Funerals are for the family. They're for the ones that are left. They're not for the one that has passed away, but they're for those of us that want to be there and, and uh, uphold the family. And naturally, there's always grief and tears. And, but you know you can have joy when you're at a funeral service and you know the one that has passed away is resting in heaven with Jesus. So that makes all the difference in the world. This morning I'll try to bring us a message that uh, Jesus preached to his disciples and to the Jewish people. And I see the same thing happening today in our churches as we uh, go forward and we teach and preach the Word of God. We have many that seem to think that 
uh, they're just entitled to be a child of God and that they're entitled to know that they're going to spend an eternity in heaven and all things are going to just be fine irregardless of salvation. So as I look around our churches today, and I think primarily this message as we're going to see here, he was preaching it to his disciples and the Pharisees and the scribes that were around him. And I think the primary message was for them that call themselves children of God. And I want to bring that down to where we are today. I believe the message that God is giving to us today is those of many that are in the churches today have an expectation that they're just automatically in the, in the uh, body of Christ and in the family of God because of grandma or because of church membership, because of good works or whatever terminology you want to use to put on it. So Jesus is making it very clear here to the disciples and to the nation Israel and also to us today that just because you've been born into a family that has Christians in it or has a pastor in it or has uh, Sunday school teachers in it, you are not entitled to be brought to heaven and to spend eternity in heaven because of who you are. You are entitled to spend your life in heaven by what you have done in this life. And by that I mean that you have accepted Christ as your Savior and turned your life over to Him. And let me say another thing to you before I get started in the message. There is a difference in being born into the family of God and being a disciple. And Jesus will let us know that there is a big difference and there is a cost that we need to take account of and we need to make sure that we are ready for the cost because when you step out for Christ as I mentioned the system that we have Satan is not happy when the Word of God is going forth and souls are being touched Satan is not happy so we need to make a, a big difference in just becoming a child of God and then letting Him be Lord of your life and working for Him and being a disciple. In Luke chapter 14, verse 16, as Jesus is speaking here, as I said, uh, to the Pharisees and the scribes and His disciples after being questioned about uh, some things that was going on and uh, after uh, talking about uh, priorities that are in our lives today. I would probably tell you this morning that most of us as children of God need priorities in our life. We're also going to see some excuses. Many times we have excuses in our lives, but the remedy would be get rid of the excuses and come to God and let Him have control in our lives. So in Luke chapter 14 and verse 16 says, Then said He unto them, speaking of Jesus, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. These Jews knew exactly what God was talking about here. They knew exact, exactly what Jesus was saying unto them. He said unto them that that great man that represents God had prepared and made a great supper and many were invited. As I said, these people automatically concluded that because they were of the Jewish race that they were automatically born again or children of God and they were going to be in the family of God. They knew that great supper was being prepared. They knew the kingdom of God was at hand. John the Baptist preached the same thing as Christ. The kingdom of God is at hand. So when they heard this, they were happy and he, and, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them, that were bidden. He sent Christ to preach the Gospel. He sent Him to those Jewish people and that Jewish nation. And He was giving them the Gospel. In other words, they were bidding. He was giving them an altar call, if you want to call it that. He is doing the same today in mine and your society. As I said earlier, I believe primarily He is speaking to the Jewish people and also it's transferring over to the church 
Too many in the church today are there because they were brought up, they were taken to church when they were small, their family was in church, but they have not made the commitment. They have not stepped out at a time in their life and come to Christ and asked for forgiveness of sins and turned their life over to Him. So as we see here, they were bidden, said that they were bidden, come, God is saying today, come. Today is the day of salvation. Come, let us reason together. Come, let us resolve your sins. I heard a a song on the way to church this morning that was singing about the forgetfulness of God when we come to Him and when we confess our sins. He remembers them no more. I may just shout this morning because I had a lot that was put under the blood. I had a lot that was washed and clean. But praise be unto God, He does not hold that against me this morning. He does not hold it against you this morning. So we're seeing here that they were bidden for all things are now ready. I want you to know today that things are ready. The Gospel is going forth. The Word of God is being preached. Salvation is open to those that will come today. Salvation is for the believer, the one that comes. But He is also going to let us know, don't take it for granted. Too many Satanists fool today. Oh, you're a good person. Morally, you're good. You do works. You contribute. You go forward and you do those things. Well, we find where some stood and told him what all they had done for him. But he said, depart from me. I never knew you. In other words, your works didn't get you in. Your morality does not get you in. Praise be unto God. What gets you in is the cleansing power of God today. As we sing power in the blood, it's still alive today. It's still working today. There is still power in that blood today that no no matter how low you think you have sunk in this life, no matter how depressed you are, no matter how pushed down you are, there is nothing that the blood of Christ cannot cleanse and wash away and bring you to the knowledge of God today. I thank God that we see many today, they're living on tranquilizers. Tons of tranquilizers are being sold today. But Jesus is the answer today. If we will turn to Him, if we will turn our life over to Him, and we will be forgiven of our sins, you would be amazed that the anxiety and the things that will be lifted off of our life when Jesus comes in and when He takes control in our lives. All things are now ready. Today is the call, as I said. Today is the day of salvation. You're not promised tomorrow. All things are ready for each one that would hear the Word of God. For each one that would accept the Word of God. Jesus is speaking to His people and He say, I have made a way. I am here. I am the Messiah. All things are ready. But you must come. You must believe. You must accept. And the same call is going forth today. I thank God that blood doesn't wear out. I thank God that that blood doesn't get weak. That blood is as strong today as it was in the beginning. And it will be as strong throughout eternity. It not only saves, it keeps, it preserves. And we will be preserved in the the blood of Jesus throughout eternity. And they all with one consent begin to make excuse. (laughs) I don't know. I'm sure each one of us has made excuses about our spirituality before. We've made excuses about our church attendance. We've made a lot of things, and I hear the same old thing a lot with people that are a little lax in their attendance in our churches today. I'm working six days a week. Well, I'm glad you have the strength to work. I'm glad you have a good job that you work six days a week. I think that should be the more reason that you're in church, thanking Him for that strength that you have and thanking Him for that job that you have and praising 
praising Him for what He's doing in your life. They begin to make excuses. All of them, He's saying here. The first said unto Him, I have bought a piece of ground. Oh my, my. We see commerce here. We see the things of this old world. There's nothing wrong with buying a house or buying a piece of land. But as we're going to see here in a moment, they, they, their priorities weren't uh, uh, in the right place. If you buy a, pe- a piece of land or you buy a house, don't, uh, don't decide to do the work on that house on Sunday. Don't decide to go out and see it on Sunday. Let me say another thing about buying that piece of land. If you've had a good job and you work six days a week and you're pr- uh, prospering and you buy you a nice boat, Don't decide to go out on Sundays when you're out there with that boat that God has given you. You need to give God the glory and God the praise for what He has done. Excuses. How many of our excuses are them in our lives today? Nothing wrong, as I said, with buying a boat. Nothing wrong with buying property. But keep your priorities right. Keep Him as number one in your life. And I can tell you that He will bless you and He will give you the things of this whole world. But you need to have your priorities in the right place. And He said, I bought a piece of ground. I must need go and see it. Well, that sounds a little silly to me. I'm not very smart, but if I'm going to buy a house or buy a piece of land, I'm going to see it before I buy it. And first of all, this was at night when this was happening. So you wouldn't go look at a piece of land at night, would you? Because you wouldn't know what was there. You wouldn't go look at a house when it was all closed up and no lights inside that house. You would do it in the daylight. You could do it when you could expect you it. And you would do it when you could tell about it. So it's obvious it's just an excuse. They didn't want to come. How many do we see those things happening? And I'm going to keep pounding home to you today. I believe this is speaking to the church of today. I believe this is speaking to the religious folk that are here today. And I believe He is speaking to you and I here today that we need to set our priorities right. It's good that you can buy a house, but put God first. It's good that you can buy a boat, but put God first. When it's time to go to church, you need to be in church praising and thanking God for what He has done for you in your life. So he says that, I must need go and see it, and I pray thee have me excused. God is not going to accept that excuse. When you and I get down to pray, and God doesn't answer our prayers, look at your life. Have you been giving excuses? Have you not been in church? Are you not opening your Bible and reading? Are you not praying? Are you not following the guidelines that God has given you? And you say, Pastor, my prayers aren't being answered. Well, let me tell you, God has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if your prayers aren't being answered, you need to get on your knees and check your heart out and find out where the problem is. I can tell tell you this morning where the problem is. The problem is in the heart of that one that's not serving God. The problem is not with God. He is there. He is available. He is all caring. He is all powerful. And He will answer our prayers if we're walking with Him and serving Him this morning. <clears throat> and another said, I bought five yoke of oxen. Here we go again. You know, I, I, when I was studying this, I had forgotten it, but my sister in Alabama will remember this, and I'm sure she'll be glad that I've mentioned it. I went down to visit her and Howard, Jean and I, many years ago, and at that uh, particular time, the, I don't know if it was a holiday or some special thing, but they had what they, they called it a tractor pull, but it wasn't tractors. They took me over to a plot of ground and I saw the most beautiful horses and the most beautiful mules and they were teamed up and they had about 20 acres out there and they would go out and boy, those farmers, they showed off their animals. They showed off how they could plow the ground and those animals would just strut and I tell you, the farmer's head would get bigger and when they went off to the side for us to look at them, the farmer was getting more out of it than the horses was. 
but they had all different kinds. And they were proved and they were shown that they could do the work and they could plow the land and they could do it. You don't do it in the nighttime. I would have missed all of that if it had been dark, but it was in the daytime. It was beautiful. And they showed off their work. If this man bought uh, five yoke of oxen and didn't see them work, I would tell you he's not too smart. And I go to prove them. I pray you excuse me. Another excuse. This completely an excuse, isn't it? Anybody that knows anything about would not go and buy five yoke of oxen that they didn't know whether they would work or they'd be like that stubborn mule that would just sit down and not pull the plow. But God is saying, I'm not going to accept that. And here's the one that really gets me. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. I would probably give him a little more credit than the other two. Because we know that when we marry and when we have a wife, a lot of our concerns and desires are there to please our wife. But you know what? That excuse don't fly either. Why is that, Pastor? Because if you're the head of the house... If you are the man that God wants you to be, if you are born again and washed in the blood, it is your obligation to take your wife to church. It is your obligation to take your children to church. It is your obligation to teach them about the Word of God. There's going to be some sad people when we get to heaven and tears are going to be there of a father that was neglectful of taking his wife to church and taking his children building the church, and teaching them about the Word of God. You say, well, you're just meddling. Thank you, God. I'm here to meddle. I'm here to give you the Word of God. I'm here to tell you what God says. I'm here to prevent you from having problems in your life. I'm here to prevent you from making excuses and leaving God out of your life. You say, well, I really don't want to hear that. Well, I'm sorry you don't, but you're going to hear it anyway. God says it's an excuse. The family is being uh, uh, assaulted in America today. The family is being torn down in America today. The morality that we see in our country today is disgusting. But God says He is on the throne. He will remain in control. He is all-powerful. And praise be unto God, He's still in the forgiving business today. If you have made an excuse, if you have missed the work that He wants you to do, if you have missed being in His house, when you know you can be there. You're one little prayer away of forgiveness. You're a one prayer away of God giving you His blessings and His hand upon you. So I married a wife. So the servant came, showed his Lord these things. That means Jesus went and talked to the Father. You know what? I'm so glad Jesus talks for me. I'm so glad Jesus looks around to the Lord sometimes and says, you know that old boy Thurman, he ain't much, but he believes in me. I called him and he's gone forward and he's preached my word. He's standing upon the Word of God. That's what I want Jesus to say to to God. I want Him to say when I have problems and when I have concerns and when I don't know which way to go, that's mine, Lord. You need to bless Him. You need to lift Him up. You need to strengthen Him. You need to send Him an answer. You need to send Him victory. We need victory over things in our lives today. And these excuses will, will stop the victory to come. He showed His Lord. Then the master of the house being angry. I've heard people say, well, I just can't serve a God that's angry. Well, you know, that's being awful pious. That's kind of like those that went to buy the yoke of oxen without trying them, or the house without looking at them, or the marrying the wife and not getting involved. Oh, I want you to know my Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. He looks down at society today, and he, I'm sure that his heart breaks, and his mind is on us, and he is concerned about us. I have heard people say God is going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah if he don't come soon. Well, I got news for you and for them also. God will apologize to no one 
He is the one that's God. He is the one that's in control. And Sodom and Gomorrah was bad, but He gave them an opportunity to confess, and they didn't. Is He giving America an opportunity today to confess and come to Him? Thanks be unto God. He will forgive us and set our hearts right. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, and the halt and the blind. We're seeing the beginning of the real church. We're seeing the beginning of one. God told Jesus to go out and preach the gospel. Go out into the cities. Go out into the countryside. Go out into the suburbs. Go everywhere and preach my gospel to the... <clears throat> to the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. The church started with po- the poor, the ones the world didn't want any have, have anything to do with. This old world still looks down on those that are poor and don't have a lot of this society things. But praise God. He said, go out and reach those people that are in need. Go out and reach those people that have a hard way to go. Go out and reach those people that have much of nothing and give them hope. And Jesus gives us hope today. Jesus gives us a victory today whether you have a little shack or you have a mansion. If you will turn your life over to Jesus as He said here, He said go to those that are in need. Go to those that are worse off than the others and give them My Gospel. Praise be unto God. That Gospel came to me many years ago in February the 2nd, 1975. And it lifted me up and it saved me and it forgave me. And it has been with me ever since. Thank God He sent Him out to the highways and the byways and to the down and outers and those that didn't have anything. And He says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the God that we serve today. Go quickly and tell them. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as Thou hast commanded. And yet there is room to see in the ominous of God. We're seeing that God, when, when, Jesus t- t- when God told Jesus to go, He said, it is done. God can see tomorrow. The ominence of God is, as Jesus was speaking, that was going to happen and it was going to take place. And He knew already, it is done. And thou hast commanded and get ready to shout. Yet there is room. There is room for anyone at the cross today. He was speaking to the nation of Israel and the scribes and the Pharisees Pharisees and the prophets of old and those that went all the way back to Abraham and from Abraham forward. He said, all of you can come. All of you can come in. There is room. He reached down to me and He said, there is room. He reached down to you and He said, there is room. And praise be unto God, He's got His hand out to a lost and dying world. And He said, I have room in my house for you. I have room in my family for you you, but you must believe, you must accept. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. That word compel is saying that when the preaching of the Word went forth, the anointing and the power of God was on those preachers. The anointing and the power of God were on them in such a way that when the Gospel went out, the power of the Gospel convicted. It drew them to Christ. And it was almost like they had no choice in the matter. The power of God was so great. Peter preached when the anointing of God uh, on that first sermon that he preached and the power power of God and the anointing of God was on him so much the men there said what must we do 3,000 souls were saved and brought to Christ we need the anointing and the power of God in our lives today we don't need the preachers that get up and give you a dead message or a church that's a dead church or the Spirit of God that's not active. How do we do that, Pastor? Give God control in your life. Give God control in your teachers and in you preachers and let the Spirit of God control and anoint and the power of God will go forth and His work will be done. And praise be unto God, there is room for all. 
And the Lord said unto his servant, Compel them to come in, that my house might be filled. God's house is going to be filled. God's house is going to be filled because the nation Israel rejected him as the Messiah. The nation Israel rejected him as the uh, salvation. But you know what? That didn't throw at the work of God. When they rejected him, he reached out to you and me. He reached out to them by the byways. He reached out to them in the inner cities. He reached out to them no matter where they were. The gospel was turned to the Gentiles and he opened the door. And he has room for each one of us. And he has room today for each one that will come because his house is going to be filled. As I told them yesterday in that funeral, my God said he has gone to build a place for us. In my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and there where I am there you may be also there is room in the house of God there is room in that place that he has prepared for us there is room in that eternal home that is going to come down for you and I one of these days When is He coming, Pastor? I don't know, but I hope it's today. What about those that aren't saved today? My Bible tells me that they have heard the Gospel. God is only accountable to man one time. If you've heard the Gospel one time, you, you will not be spared. You turn your back on God, you don't know what's on tomorrow. These people had rejected Him. They had got religious, and they had set their own way. And they were acting in their own ways. Does that sound familiar today? We have so many different beliefs in our society today. If you get away from the Bible, the one that's written and inspired by God, you can be so confused you'll never find your way to salvation. But God has made it easy. He has made it matter of fact. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And let me add the rest of that verse. And thy house. People, Pastor, I have people in my house that aren't saved. Pray. You say, is He going to force them into salvation? No, He's not. But He'll give them an opportunity. And it is up to them. Whosoever will may come, John says. Those that are lost. Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will means me. Put your name there. It doesn't matter. And for I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. That's pretty rough. What are you saying to me this morning, Pastor? I'm telling you if you're in here this morning and you're not a child of God, God says you're not going to enter into that kingdom. If you're in here this morning and you haven't made a commitment to Christ, ask Him to come into your life and forgive you and bring you into the family of God. You're in the same uh, situation that these Jewish people were. He's saying, you have heard my word. You rejected me. You turned away from me. Therefore, you're not coming in, even though you think you're the Jewish people and you're entitled you may be in here and say, I don't think I'm entitled, but I am just not. don't believe what you're saying. You need to search your heart. You need to let the Holy Spirit have control in your life. The Holy Spirit will reveal. The Holy Spirit will draw. The Holy Spirit will convict. And praise be unto God, He will lead you to an altar of repentance. And when you do that, you will have a feeling that you will never Uh, have felt before in your life because the power of God will come and take up its dwelling place in you and you will never be the same. As I said when I started this message this morning, I believe He's speaking to the church. And I believe the church needs to take account and they need to stop and say, am I here because I was brought here as a child and came up through Sunday school and church? Am I here because my grandparents were members of this church? Am I here because I just feel that it's right to go to church on Sunday? Or can you say beyond a shadow of a doubt, there's a time and place in my life where, as you said this morning, Pastor, that Holy Spirit convicted. It drew me, and I came to an altar, and I confessed that I was a sinner, and I needed to be forgiven. And I was brought into the family of God. If you don't have that assurance this morning, 
you need to make sure that you have that assurance before you leave this church this morning. We're going to have an altar call here in a moment and sing a song. But you know what? You don't have to wait for that. If the Spirit is drawing and convicting, today is the day of salvation. We're not promised tomorrow. I'm going to ask Brother Billy to come and we'll have a song of invitation. And you need to do today what will be with you throughout the rest of your life and know beyond a shadow of a doubt where you're going to spend your eternity. So I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer and they're going to sing a song. Father, I come to you once again today thanking you for your presence we have felt in our midst, for your freedom to preach, for the Holy Spirit that's here doing the work that you left him here to do on this earth. And that's drawing all people to you. And we ask that you touch each one under the sound of my voice today, that commitments will be made to not have excuses in their lives, but serve you as their Lord and Savior. That commitments will be made to step out and accept you as Savior. And we'll give you all the honor and the glory for what's accomplished here this morning. In your precious and holy name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Let's all